it's interesting sure. that it's all about lending and it's all about leverage, right? I mean, it, 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 when you think of, when you kind of zoom out and think about that, it just, it's a little scary. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, I, and again, you know, with, with all this, uh, what's been happening with COVID, and a lot of banks are pulling out of lending at the moment. This is the time when we need more lending. Uh, right. If the, the economy, uh, or borrowing, if the economy has to kick start, and again, you know, who's to say this won't happen again? And I think uh, there will be other financial <laughs> things happening. If we've learned anything in the last 12 to 13 years, I think we can pretty much be sure it will happen again. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So again, so that, that's, that's really it. And I think, I think it's, I mean, really excited about this space at the moment and, and, and how how we're developing it in terms of different angles. But, but again, my, my point is um, financial, yes, it's very important, but I think there's more to it than financial because if you look at the physical things happening uh, on the edges, uh, you know, they need to be integrated with this new financial architecture to actually have an impact because you can't just live in this little bubble. It, the bubble has to start Expand. Yeah. interacting with the physical. So how, how far away are you at this point from making all of that a reality to uh, the fabric that we've spoken about to having that completely built and, and, and ready to go and have, you know, basically everything interacting with it? So at the moment we have the deployments are starting. So we are deploying uh, some trial supply chain solutions. We're deploying um, we're trialing uh, with small, uh, you know, service providers for ride hailing. We're building a we're building a network of uh, we're calling it DDN, which is a kind of decentralized delivery network where you can actually connect uh, ride hailing, parcel delivery, food delivery That's into one. Um, which means that you give the control back to the service provider and the consumer and you let them interact with each other. And, and within that system, you then you can keep adding more features because to be fair, it's very easy to add feature because you have an agent, you're not, you're not defining uh, anything in the middle as such, you're letting them communicate. So what that does is you can add different features. So for example, from the DDN moving on to hospitality where you can actually um, you, you can actually book hotels, rooms, houses, rentals. It's a very small step. Um, so you could actually um, enable kind of individuals to do their own thing with uh, the, the confidence and the comfort of having a, um, a, a like a, a, a trusted entity in the middle because you, you're kind of giving trust to all these agents. You're giving them... Uh, decentralized IDs where you can actually in- transact with them knowing that it's okay to interact with them. So it's just so the next step in that evolution. Yeah. So I mean, we went from, you know, you call your travel agent to, I remember being mind blown when like Travelocity and Expedia became, you know, so uh, universally used. And then we go to Airbnb, which is like, it's not a hotel anymore. It's someone's property. And now we're eventually eliminating the middleman there as well. So that you're transacting directly with the person who owns that house or, or, or the hotel yeah. or whatever. Because that is exactly what you do today. I mean, if you take out, um, if you take out the, the secondary things, that's all you do. You know, when I book a hotel, I book a hotel with the hotel chain. Uh, the only the only thing is because technology says okay I'm going to be able to aggregate all of that for you, but what if you don't need aggregation? What if you right. your agent could qu- query everything directly? You know you don't need aggregation, and then you can actually negotiate with hotels as well. I mean your agent could be saying okay I've got three hotels, it's same vicinity, I know it's the right place, I can negotiate, and and one of the hotels has full you know occupancy, doesn't want to negotiate, the other one might. So how do you find the best deal? Not the best deal for the middleman, but the best deal best for deal you. for you as the consumer. It's interesting. It's like uh, when you talk about these agents, it almost sounds like every individual is going to have access to like a high-powered personal assistant. <laughs> and that's exactly what we are hoping will happen over time. That is coming. I mean, we can see that with Alexas. We can see that with Siri's. 
you know, they're, they're helping. The, the, the problem is still the same, though, because Alexa's objective is not aligned with your objective. It's right. Alexa wants to provide data to Amazon so that they can sell me things. <laughs> so, you know, so that, and that's really, I mean, I'm not saying it's always that bad, but, um, but I, think, I think there's too much of it. So it would be a personalized Alexa. What are your thoughts on things like Alexa and Siri and should the average person be using them or is that a very you know, personal decision based on your own comfort level with privacy and these companies? I, I love technology. I always like to use it. It disappoints me many a times. Technology <laughs> always does. Um, but that's not to say uh, it's not good. I mean, the other day, because there was quite hot weather in the, in the UK, you know, the, the temperature kind of, went up quite a bit and um, Alexa comes and says, well, you know, if, if you're going out, you be careful. It's quite hot. Now, this was unprompted and it's quite nice. I like it. I like it. But the other people might think it's a bit creepy. <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, in the peak of COVID, uh, Alexa became my daughter's best friend. So <laughs> I could appreciate <laughs> play games with Alexa. She plays yeah. whatever music. She, I mean... I think it's amazing that she can ask it questions. You know, uh, we have help that uh, primarily speaks Spanish and she translates things and talks to her, you know, by asking Alexa. It's pretty, inc I mean, it really is pretty incredible. So if you had... And that will evolve from there so that you can just say, well, Alexa, book me, uh, book me a cab, book me. And you can do that, but it's not, it's, it's not, it's not structured correct. That's why there's so much... A hindrance because there's so much friction because it's not structured in the right way. Now, if you imagine um, Alexa um, connecting to your agent and the ability to connect to anything else, then Alexa would be much more efficient because you could say, Alexa, go and book me a cab, right? Um, and Alexa could go and query all the, the cabs and, you know, negotiate the deal and you have the cab or, you know, or book a hotel like that. So rather than going through 10 other right. loops. Right. right. So, I mean, at the end of the day, we're just trying to eliminate middlemen from everything. Uh, not from everything, but trying to do it where it's more efficient to do it without them because there are more efficient ways. I mean, forget about the middleman. I mean, I'm, I've got nothing against the middleman. You know, I'm a commodity trader. I mean, I'm the middleman. <laughs> yeah. um, that's not the point. The point is, it's not efficient anymore because you could do it more efficiently with a lot less cost. And I think that's really, that's really the key. Here.